Let's go, girls. From New York City to Los Angeles, Powered Up with Beck and Franklin is giving women of all ages permission to live the life they've always dreamed of. Why live in black and white when you can choose the brilliance of 3D and Technicolor? Each week, Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin and their high-powered guests will be here to cheer you on, to share their challenges, their successes, and what they've learned along the way. It's all about women supporting women. The stories and practical tips on sex, beauty, money, and so much more are designed to help you reconnect to the powerful woman you are. Fabulous knows no limits. Now it's time for you to expand your boundaries. Here are Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin. Hey, ladies, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Linda Franklin, and we've got a great show today on Powered Up Talk Radio. We're going to visit with Sarah from Healthy Business Travel, and then we're going to round out the show with our tarot card reader, Robbie McPherson, coming in from Buffalo. Now, Linda, i got to tell you, I started a new program this week. I, I bought uh, Jillian Michaels' Body Revolution, and I'm day two in my 90-day program, and I'm feeling great. <laughs> what is the one that you bought before that you were using the videos? Oh, the Zumba one. I love oh, the, the Zumba. Zumba one. But, you know, I get bored. I, you know, I can do yeah. one of these programs for about three months, you know, and I, like, you know, Jillian is all about the salmon patties, you know, so I'm going to eat the salmon patties with, you know, mixed greens and stuff, and I'll do her, you know, came with a little cookbook, which I like. So I'm going to follow that, and, I, you know, I like the, 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 the different learning the different meals. But after about three months, I get bored. And, you know, I did that Zumba and I, you know, and I lost weight and I felt great and felt fit. But then I got bored with it. And I just, you know, I don't seem to be able to sustain uh, any one workout other than swimming in the summer, you know, and hiking in the fall and spring. You know, that I do without without any um, prodding. But these programs, I seem to only have a three month lifespan. All right, well, can't you mix and match? I mean, you can't you intersperse and do, you know, if, if you do it three times or four times a week, that, you know, t- t- twice on one program and then, you know, twice on another program? You know, that's a good idea. I, I, I probably could. I'm such a... I'm such a purist with certain things. Like, I would be a good foot soldier in the Army just it, with this stuff. It's like, tell me what to do and I'll buy it. Tell me what to eat. Tell me how many times a day to work out. Tell me what to do. I think because I have to make so many decisions in my day between my dad and my kids and my company that it's just nice to follow somebody else's direction and not have to think. Yeah, well, I'm not good at following directions, so I sort of have to create my own. <laughs> and, you know, nobody's per- – you know, you're not perfect, um, but you get to to – you know, get as close as you can to doing what you think you ought to do. I mean, yesterday, I'm not feeling great today because I think um, I, I've got Passover Seder syndrome today. I've got the effects <laughs> of eating things that I usually don't eat and that my body is not happy with. And then the the the, um, the preparation, even though I didn't make the food, um, it took me, I was thinking about this for like a week before and getting everything ready. And it was like, uh, so everything would go without a flaw. And it did. And it was wonderful. But today I think I'm saying, okay, I, because I can relax. It's like, oh, what's, what's all this about? I don't think my, I don't think my body liked that uh, potato pudding or the brisket. It's rebelling a little bit. You know, well, I love that. I love holidays, you know, and I I celebrate in my house, you know, the Jewish holidays and the Christian holidays because then we get like twice the fun and um, I, I, and they all revolve around eating. Oh, absolutely. That's what it's all about. And drinking. We went through three bottles of champagne and two bottles of wine last night and there weren't that many of us. So I guess that had a little something to do with it as well. Oh, yeah. Well, but, you know, that's the thing. Like, I love to eat. I really do. You know, I went out uh, with a Navy friend of mine this weekend, and we spent the day running around the ocean and came back. And, you know, he ate this, you know, nice little, you know, tiny little burrito plate, man. I tucked into two fish tacos. I had a garlic shrimp taco. I had a garlic shrimp burrito. They were just bringing the food on, and I was happy as a clam, you know, totally out ate them. I out ate an Army guy, you know, a while back. 
I love to eat. So I know if I'm not really diligent about working out hard, I will be, yeah. you know, one of those 500 pound people on the Discovery Channel. Yeah, no, I know. I love to eat too. Uh, my body lately is saying, okay, you, 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 you can't overdo it because then you'll pay the price the next day, just like you did with drinking. You know, you drink too much and the next day you feel crappy. Well, <laughs> that's sort of the same thing with eating these days. That's today. So is, is it Passover, hungover, talk radio? <laughs> yeah, this is Passover, uh, hangover, talk radio. And I, and because it was at my house, I have leftovers. So guess what's for dinner tonight? More of the same. But I'm oh. going to have the chicken soup with the matzo ball. Maybe that's it. Because, <laughs> you know, that will soothe. And I'll, and I'll you know, give the rest. But um, it was it was great. And you know, every once in a while, you've got to because you always do it at somebody else's house. You got to pay the piper and do it at yours. And it, but you know, I think the more that you do these things, the more that you have these dinner parties or holiday parties, the easier it gets because it just is part of the routine. I think so. I think so. You know, I do a lot of entertaining, Linda. You know what I found to be my secret source of like you know relief is I have a full set of. White, it's pretty, it's Italian white serving wear with matching plates and everything. And that comes out for every holiday because, you know, all the platters, all the bowls, all the serving things, everything is white. And it's real pretty, you know, Italian, I don't know, ceramic. So it's got beautiful design to it. But it goes with every holiday. When you change the flowers, change the napkins, and then put, you know, just a couple little decorations out, you have a perfectly elegant dinner every time for every occasion. I just find it really easy than trying to match, match you know, plates because I'm that A1 anal retentive. I don't like things not to match. My sheets have to match, my towels have to match, and my dishware has to match. Well, um, we I have this, uh, I think we got it at auction. It's a beautiful set, and um, I use it for all my you know, because it's sort of white with gold leaf around. I mean, it's very, it's very, very pretty. And there's so many dishes, that, and you never run, you never run out of dishes. So it's really, that's really, really easy. I don't have to think about it. Just like you, you just put it on the table. You know, you're going to have plenty of dishes left over for other things, and um, it makes it very easy. And then, you know, with the um, with the stemware, same thing. There's, I think it's set for 16 or 18 or whatever. So you know, just put that out. It's it's really no thought. And today I actually washed the tablecloths and the napkins that we use, and they laundered like, oh, my God, no wrinkles. It was clean and whistled, and I put it back ready for the next one. Wow, that is terrific. Yeah, because I hate ironing the napkins. And, um, well, that's I don't know wonderful. what this stuff is, but it, it just I threw it in the, the washer on, um, on, on permanent press, and then I threw the whole thing in the dryer on permanent press, and it came out wrinkle-free and brand spanking new. So that was, that was good because you send a tablecloth, at least here in New York, you know, one of those big ones that you need for, you know, when you put the leaves in your table so it's a really a big table. It must it cost about 35 bucks, 50 bucks to have the tablecloth cleaned. Easily. Yeah. Easily. So anyway, um, that was, my, thing. That well, was my contribution, and huh? uh, I'm glad I did it. Everyone had a great time, and it was fun. Well, there was only one problem with that event. I wasn't there. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That is that is a problem. You know, this two-coast thing is <laughs> is not good. And, and our no. friends And our friends that um, were there last night that uh, presently live in Greenwich, Connecticut, in two weeks they're moving to Nashville. Why? That's what I'm asking. Why are you moving to Nashville? I don't know. Um, I, I got to give them credit that they're, they're adventurous and they're, you know, they just sold the house. They packed up all their stuff and they're moving to Nashville. He was born in Nashville. Um, oh, okay. You know, and but that was, you know, that was a long time ago. But they went back to visit and they, they sort of re-fell in love or she fell in love with the city and they're giving it a shot. Well, so, you know, that'll be a lot of fun. Their kids are grown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. There and and her daughter and um, he doesn't have. This is a second marriage for both. She uh, she has a daughter, uh, and she, the daughter lives in Boston. And she just had a grandchild last year. So I mean, it's a lot closer from Greenwich to Boston to visit with the grandchild than it is from from Boston to to uh, Nashville. But listen, if it makes them happy, you know, you learn to say we think they're they're bananas. But listen. 
If it works, it works. It can't. That's why everybody's got their own thoughts, their own ideas, their own lives, and you can't compare yours to anybody else's. Well, that's right. And what's the worst? They sell it and move back. I mean, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, well, I and, they, and, and they I do have a that. home in Florida, so uh, you know that they're not going to be they're not going to be homeless. That's true. They're not going to be homeless. Well, and I like that. I I feel that you know the different places around the world I've lived in my lifetime have really enriched me. They give you great stories, and and you know you just you just you you enjoy a lot more. Yeah, you know, and you know they're you know they're getting on. Uh, you know, they're not old old, but you know they're certainly past sixty. And and to to make that big change, you know, you sort of get set in your ways in one place and. But not them. They're they're off to the next adventure. See, I think that's great. I like that. Off to the next adventure. Well, they're going to have to do a lot of traveling if they're going to see that grandbaby and come up and see their friends. So it's a good thing that uh, we're going to be bringing on soon uh, Sarah James from Healthy Business Travel. I, Linda, I travel a lot, um, you know, and I do most by car these days, you know, for work, and I stay overnight a lot of places. And I will say one of the hardest things during traveling, especially when you're in a business situation, you know, and you eat what's put in front of you, it's really, really hard to be careful and watch what you eat. Yes, or, you know, when you're out in restaurants, you get tempted. I know that when I when I go out to eat just in, you know, in New York, uh, I eat a lot more than I do when I'm home. Me too. Me too. And especially if the client's paying and I'm like, ooh. Oh, <laughs> now we know. Now we know. Yeah, I come and eat yeah. at a house. And- you pay and, and you'll eat. Yeah, no, eat, and eating and drinking. I mean, that's that's part of our society. That's how we entertain ourselves, and uh, that's why there's so many heavy and un, uh, heavy and uh, and unhealthy people out there. But you really have to monitor it even when you're out. I agree. I agree, and I think you have to monitor as you get older. So um, sure. I'm going to take a commercial break. Uh, when we come back from the break, Linda, we're going to visit with Sarah James of Healthy Business Travel. She is a registered nurse. She's a pharmaceutical uh, salesperson. She is a yoga instructor. She does all sorts of things. I think it's neat when people combine their skill sets uh, to bring something fresh and new to the world. So we're going to talk to her after the break. We've got lots more powered up with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin after these messages. What does success mean to you? Money? Power? Fame? Having everything money can buy? Does it mean having a job or career that you love? A great family life? Or simply to be happy? If you're still searching for answers, then join us each Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern for Prime Time Success Radio, where Alan Skidmore and his special guests will discuss health, finances, relationships, being in business, and how you can have a life that is not only successful, but a life of meaning. Alan has been studying success principles for over 25 years through reading, attending seminars, interviewing successful people, and a daily lesson from the School of Hard Knocks. And now he wants to share that information with you. So join Alan Skidmore on Primetime Success Radio every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on the Rockstar Radio Network, as he takes you on a journey of finding the heart of your success. Get ready for Wise Up Radio, leveraging your learning, leadership, and legacy with Donna Kimbrand, the edgy evolutionary, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, here on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you're an entrepreneurial leader or visionary, stay ahead of your game with insights, tools, and strategies that give you the thought leader's edge. Each week, join Donna and her guests as she'll ask the edgy questions, help you discover game-changing shortcuts to better thinking and learning, how to explore the ripple effects of leadership excellence and how to create your life as a living legacy where the legacy you leave is the life you live as thought leaders you need strategies to help you enjoy the confidence and thrill of riding the wave of rapid change for more on donna check out her website gamechangerthinking.com 
Then join the conversation and sharpen up your wits on Wise Up Radio with Donna Kimbrand, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, here on the Rockstar Radio Network. We're back with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin. Here's more Powered Up with Beck and Franklin. Hey, ladies, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Linda Franklin, and we are going to be visiting with Sarah James, and I'm going to tell you I've been drinking cold water all day long, Linda, because they say it helps you burn another 60 calories uh, a day, so I'm really excited uh, for, um, though I did get my hand stuck in the ice machine today, i got to tell you, I was trying to get <laughs> the show, and I'm like, oh, crap, this cannot be my excuse for being late on the air today. Um, but uh, we're going to talk about healthy eating, and not only for business travelers, but I'm excited to, to learn about it because I think business travelers, from you know being an ex uh, corporate professional who traveled, it's an awful lot like being a single mom and having to schlep everybody everywhere and eat you know places you don't really choose yourself to eat. So I'm really excited to talk to uh, Sarah today. Well, I think a lot of hotels now are addressing that issue, and they are they are having spa menus at different hotels, and also uh, spas and and you know exercise machines and masseuses and and yoga. I mean, so that when you're away, you can you know really take advantage of it and and really not get out of kilter. Yeah, I think that's out of, get, not getting out of kilter. That's like the the, the buzzword of the day. Uh, Sarah, are you with us? I am. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to join you guys. Okay, so we're we're doubling up. We're team tagging uh, ta- um, Linda because she's in New York. You're in San Francisco. I'm in Los Angeles. So we're two to one for the Los Angeles coast this week. Usually it's heavy on our New York uh, guests. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up. I'm so, up. Powered on Powered Up Radio. <laughs> So, Sarah, tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, for Linda and the other people who are just meeting you today. Sure. Thank you. So, I have always been passionate about health and wellness. Um, I'm a registered nurse. I'm also a certified health coach and a yoga instructor. However, I have spent the last 11 plus years in uh, working as a sales executive for various pharmaceutical and biotech companies. So the bulk of my career has been in corporate America, and with that, I have had to do extensive traveling. So my job requires that I attend sales meetings, and I had to deal with, you know, have, having to, you know, struggle keeping healthy on the road while attending these meetings and, you know, traveling by air, traveling by car, overnight, hotel stays, et cetera. And that really... Um, I was conflicted. I, I loved health and wellness. It was very easy for me to, to stick to it at home, but I felt like oh, it all just, you know, went to pieces when I was traveling. So that actually is what led me to develop ways to take health on the road. And I really had to put some time and thought into it, and I developed some techniques. And uh, that's what I do today. And then now, of course, I created a course called Healthy Eating for Business Travelers. To share those exact techniques and how to do it. So what does that mean, though? I mean, is, is eating healthy the same for everybody? You know, I made an analogy in the opening segment that I find that my business travel is a lot like being a busy single mom. You know, you eat in your car, you eat on the fly, you're, you know, running here and there and, you know, basically living out of your car uh, until I go to the airport and then I live out of the airplane. <laughs> I mean, what does that really mean, healthy, healthy eating for, for business travelers? So you've made a great point, and, and is that – being on the road is hectic. You've got to plan ahead. You have to, you know, have some things uh, with you to prevent those what I call food emergencies. But another critical point is that when you're on the road, that's when you're most vulnerable. So take, for example, a, a flight, a trip to, you know, Chicago or somewhere for a business trip. When you're traveling, you're typically stressed, and it could be good stress. It could be just, you know, um, you know, anxiety, getting ready for a meeting, for a presentation. But when your stress levels increase, your cortisol levels increase. And what happens to your immune system is that your immune system function actually declines. 
So what that means is you're out there and you're in a most vulnerable situation. Your immune system is declining and you're on an airplane, which we know is not the cleanest place um, to be. In fact, you're 113 times more likely to catch a cold on an airplane. So you're putting yourself in some pretty, you know, um, sticky situations. And we know that the World Health Organization uh, predicts, you know, pandemics, and that's how they travel is by airplane. So you really have to pay attention. It's the most important to be healthy on the road. Um, and so you'll prevent yourself from getting sick. And we all know being sick on the road is like the worst thing, but you'll also feel better. So there's a benefit to that. So what you actually gain if you, you know, take health into your own hands and really feed yourself and feed and nourish your body, um, you will not only prevent illness, but your energy will increase. You'll be able to perform better. So your presentations and you'll, you'll just all around feel better. Uh, you'll get solid sleep. And all those things, of course, are, are just precious when you're traveling. So that adrenaline, I'm sorry, so let me just clarify really quick. That anxiety you said, is that the same as adrenaline, like the adrenaline that you get, you're all hopped up before you go? Is that what you're talking about that increases your cortisol? Absolutely, absolutely. So it actually comes from the adrenal gland, hence the word ad adrenaline. Um, but the ad adrenal gland that sits right on top of the kidney, you have two, um, actually pumps out that cortisol. So again, it, you're right. It could be that, that adrenaline of like rushing and, or, you know, excitement or nervousness, all of that pumps out the cortisol and that tells your body, your immune system actually slows down. It's like, wait a second, something is, you know, going on here. We need to conserve energy. And um, so, yes, you're right. That's, it, it's adrenaline. Uh, you said um, earlier that you, you've worked for a number of pharmaceutical companies throughout the country. Mm -hmm. And um, do, do you ever get conflicted of being um, a healthy eater, a, a teacher of, of yoga, and that with the you know some of the drugs that the companies are putting out there? Because it's very easy for people when they're not feeling well um, to go to the doctor and get a pill to pop rather than really um, really be involved in your own health and wellness by doing the right thing with eating and exercise. Absolutely. And that, in fact, that's one of the things I'm most passionate about is primary prevention. And as a nurse, I learned that early on. Um, but yes, in my career, I have been conflicted. And uh, the role that I'm in now, actually, I'm in biotech and we work with uh, tests, diagnostic tests that are good for primary prevention. So it's not, you know, um, medications. But yes, I'm not a pill pusher, pusher at all. Um, I do believe um, this is, you know, if you look at primary prevention, what that means is healthy eating, nourishing your body, reducing your stress, drinking more water, getting enough sleep every night, doing some, you know, things to calm our minds, such as yoga and meditation. Those things, if we as a country just paid attention to those simple things, we could really, really, really and dramatically improve um, the healthcare crisis we're in. So yes, I'm not an advocate at all um, for you know uh, pushing pills as, as a first route. Um, I really lean on primary prevention. Uh, Sarah, I have a, a question that just came in on Facebook. Um, one of the girls posted, I'm suffering from adrenal fatigue and I believe it's because of my career. What do you recommend, and I know you're not here to dispense medical advice, but what do you recommend from a holistic point of view to help somebody in adrenal fatigue? Because I think that's Absolutely. what you were talking about, the adrenaline before a meeting. Yes, yes. And adrenal fatigue is actually very common, and it's because of our the way our society is. We're rush, 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 go, 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 lots of stress. So my recommendation would be uh, there's so many things in primary prevention that you can do for adrenal fatigue. And, and one of which is I would do some deep breathing exercises. I would incorporate some quiet time each day. If, if they haven't tried meditation, there are so many great resources out there um, that, you know, I know Deepak and Oprah do this free 21 day series that you can sign up for that I've done before. Um, that's wonderful. Just kind of tuning you know, into your body, into your breath, and slowing things down. That's what the, the number one thing that you can do 
um, to get those cortisol levels down. You could also get, you know, which this person may have already tested their cortisol levels, um, but that even talking to a, a practitioner would be their first step. Then, of course, there are herbal supplements that one could look into um, if, in addition if, if the cortisol levels were high enough to, to warrant that. But definitely some deep breathing, yoga, meditation um, for that would be very helpful. When a person typically, typically goes to a doctor and says, hey, I'm just not feeling well, I don't know what it is, um, I mean, they don't really identify that they may be in, in uh, adrenal fatigue or over, overdrive. Um, and, and sometimes the doctors, they don't identify it either. So when you go to your doctor, um, should you, all, if you're not feeling 100%, ask them when they do your blood workup to include, you know, an adrenal uh, level test? So that's a really good question. There are tests out there, and I would absolutely say, I think in, in today you have to be your own advocate. You have to ask those questions. You have to, you know, really push for it. And absolutely, there are, there are diagnostic tests available um, that uh, the one that, that I've done for my, my own use in the past, and I know there's a great result, um, it's a saliva test. And you do, you know, different few times a day. Uh, and then you submit the, the sample, and they'll give you a timeline, basically, of, your, of the day because they want to see whether or not your cortisol levels spike. So, yes, just asking for those tests. Um, the practitioner should know how to order it or how to get it, um, but definitely being your own advocate and, and pushing for that is a good, good idea. Sarah, I need to take us to commercial break. Uh, can you tell people quickly where they can reach you, and we're going to bring you back after the break? Sure. So my website is healthybiztravel.com. So healthybizbiz travel.com, and my email is Sarah at healthybiztravel.com. And I'd love to take any questions or you know people keep keep in touch. Great. So we're talking with Sarah James today, and uh, we're talking about pretty much lifestyle illnesses, conditions, and diseases that, you know, we can affect uh, our own wellness. We can help our own wellness by making some different changes. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk about food specifically. We're going to talk about food emergencies. We'll talk about energy bars, and we're going to do this cool word association um, thing with Sarah. So you're not going to want to miss it because, you know, anytime Linda and I associate, it's just wacky things happen. All right, we'll see you after the break. We've got lots more powered up with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin after these messages. This is for all you girls about 42. Tossing pennies into the fountain of youth. Every- is there more living for you to do? Yes. Start living inspired. Be here for Living Inspired with Trisha Goyer, Thursday afternoons at 4, 3 p.m. Central on toginet.com. Trisha will dig deep into topics that matter most to women, inspiring women to make a change in their own lives and to make a difference in the world, and maybe even deep within their own hearts. Trisha is a wife, mom, speaker, family expert, and author of 24 books. For more information on Trisha and Living Inspired, go to her website, trishagoyer.com. That's T-R-I-C-I-A-G-O-Y-E-R dot com. Trisha's vision is to be the voice of hope and possibility for women of all ages. Her intention is to serve ordinary women by encouraging extraordinary things with God's help. Trisha expresses real life, real hope for real women. Is there more living for you to do? Yes. Start living inspired. Living inspired with Trisha Goyer. Thursday afternoons at 4, 3 p.m. Central on toginet.com. We often ask, is that all there is? Why is this happening to me? Why am I always broke? How am I going to survive this mess? Then join Dr. Geraldine Tegeloff for Nature Spirits Speak, 7 p.m. Tuesday evenings on toginet.com. Geraldine is a metaphysician, nature intuitive, and prosperity coach who shares with you how she went from totally broke to living what she would call her perfectly prosperous life. Through the combination of a wealth of metaphysical knowledge and her amazing ability as an intuitive, Geraldine brings to you the secrets of her magical journey of healing emotionally, spiritually, and financially. As with the ancient seers and master teachers, Geraldine has a unique gift of being able to connect to the simple yet profound messages brought to us by Mother Nature. 
and happily shares these through today's note to self on her webpage, naturespiritspeak.com. If you need help with your journey, why not connect with Geraldine during her show, Nature Spirit Speak, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Central on toginet.com. We're back with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin. Here's more Powered Up with Beck and Franklin. This is for all you girls about 42. Hey, ladies, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Linda Franklin, and we are visiting with Sarah James of Healthy Biz. That's B I Z Travel.com. You're going to want to check her out, especially if you are on the road trying to figure out how to make it work uh, with your career and keeping yourself healthy. Now, Sarah, before we get into a bunch of questions, you wanted to do a word association, and these are always so much fun. <laughs> I can't wait for it. So I'm going to push it to the top of the segment. We're going to talk about healthiness rating, and um, you're going to ask us, uh, you know, some words to see how healthy we are on our health quiz. And I lo- Linda's probably going to get 100%. She always does well on these things. I don't think so. <laughs> well, let's try it out. Okay. So the first one we're going to um, basically on a scale from 1 to 10, um, 10 being the best, we're going to, we're going to rate these um, items. These are some common common things. So again, one to 10, 10 being the best. Um, I'll call out the name and then we'll, we'll kind of go from there. So the first one is orange juice. Bad. Three. Oh, we're yeah. giving You're numbers. Number. Okay. I was going to say sugar. Yeah, right, we already you got it. it. You got it. So orange juice, I actually, I ranked at a one um, because it's very processed, heavy, heavy, heavy sugar content. Um, unfortunately, it's not the orange juice like taking an orange and squeezing it from, you know, uh, the tree. And most orange juice is very processed and high in sugar. Um, okay, so the next one I have, and again, just you can say a number again, one from ten, one to ten, ten being the best. Coffee. I'm going to give it a nine. Linda, what do you give it? Five. Because I read so many cross cross currents on coffee. One day it's good for you, and the next day it's not. See, and I read all this stuff about how coffee, you know, like coffee enemas can, you know, they're big here in Los Angeles. They can clean out your body, um, you know, so I gave it a nine. Okay, so I ranked it a five, and the reason why is I do, but there's a lot of evidence, actually. I was just at a conference recently talking about um, coffee, and, and basically we're either a high metabolizer or slow metabolizer by um, genetically. So those who are slow metabolizers, slow metabolizers actually um, should not drink coffee. Um, it actually can stiffen the artery walls. Those who are high metabolizers um, can. So you've got a pro and con there, and there's still a lot of conflicting evidence. It does have some, some antioxidants in it in the coffee bean, and as long as you're getting um, organic coffee, which is the best, then it's still um, to be, you know, debated. But unless you want to go get your genetic testing done, um, I, I go 50-50 on that one. So if you feel more alert and you feel good, you don't get jittery, I say it's okay. Um, if you feel jittery, I would, I would pass or go for decaf. Uh, so the next one I have is cereal. What depends kind? On, but the, doesn't it depend on the on the cereal that you're talking about? Is it dry cereal? Is it oatmeal? Is it, you know, whole grains? Sugar pops. Absolutely. So um, that's that's the reason why I put that there because so cereal is like, you know, there are so many different kinds. So cereal in your supermarkets, the heavily processed kind, I would rank a a one. However, if you're truly getting, say, you know, the uh, oatmeal, for example, it's pure oatmeal, then I bump that way up to seven or an eight because the whole grains are great and, and really good for you, high fiber content. But you've got to be really careful, even those in the supermarket that say whole grain. So again, I would choose the most pure form. Um, if you can just get, you know, rolled oats, that's the best and it's great for you. Plus, there's, they travel well. And I talk about that in my course. I actually take a bag of oats with me everywhere I go on a business trip. So um, the next one is milk. Are you asking almond milk or hormone-filled cow's milk? Yeah. Okay. So good. Uh, let's say, well, you you already know the difference. So uh, the regular supermarket milk that's not organic and, and it has hormones. So we know that would be what? Low on the, way low on the, um, on the list here. 
Uh, the reason why is because it has the hormones, and we know that, that those are not only bad for the environment, they're not good for our bodies either. We already have enough estrogen. We don't need these, you know, pseudoestrogen hormones being pumped into our bodies. Uh, organic milk, um, I would say great. You know, again, if you don't have an allergy it, to casein, then you're in good shape. It's, it can be beneficial. It's got good protein. It does have the calcium and so forth in it. Um, and then, of course, yes, we ha now have almond and coconut milk. They're great substitutes that I actually I don't have a dairy sensitivity, but I incorporate those into my diet because they're so beneficial. Um, okay, so let's see. The next one I have are how about just this? the um, peanut butter? How about peanut butter? Oh, I love peanut butter. I would say peanut butter is <clears throat> if it's you know if it's organic, I'd say it's probably a seven. Yep, that's exactly what I have. Perfect. <laughs> okay. See, I Good knew job. it. I knew you would blow this quiz out of the water. <laughs> Linda, you have some questions before she continues. Yes, I do. Um, I want to talk about something that they're calling uh, an epidemic in America today and probably in more places than America, and that is silent reflux. I don't know anybody today uh, uh, that isn't taking some sort of, of uh, an acid inhibitor because um, it, I don't know anything after 40, it kind of creeps up on you. And before you know it, um, you've got it and you don't even know you have it because it's just working inside. And I mean, how do you, yeah. you know, give me what your, um, your opinion is on, on, on what's going on with that. Right. An acid. So a, what are you talking about? Um, it's it's acid reflux, but it's not. You know, most people think of in my in my opinion or what I've heard is most people think acid reflux is. You know, it's like the acid comes all the way into your mouth and you can feel it, so you know you have acid reflux. But there's acid reflux now that that you do not feel. If they they're calling it silent reflux, and you know some of the symptoms are that you're you're coughing a lot or. Uh, your voice, your vocal cords start to get uh, compromised, so you're, you're hoarse. And um, you go to the doctor, you think you have a cold or the flu, but it's actually a silent reflux. Mm -hmm. Wow. Absolutely. And those are the two most common symptoms. So you'll, the coughing and the, the, you could have a little bit of, of, of burning in your chest, but uh, coughing and if your voice is hoarse um, is, a, is an indicator. But, you know, my thought is, you know, there's so many people, as you mentioned, that are on um, antacids or PPIs, proton pump inhibitors. Yeah. But the problem is the PPIs, they, they really deplete your ability to absorb vitamin B12 because of how they act in, in the stomach. So, you know, honestly, I think with, with a lot of the chronic conditions, this one as well as the metabolic syndrome, um, obesity, many of the other chronic ailments, if we really just take it back to, you know, looking at what we're eating, if we take it down, down to like what are the micronutrients, we're making sure we're eating non-processed, good, whole, real food and taking care of ourselves. Because a lot of, even the reflux is, a, you know, A, stress exacerbates it, yeah. um, but it's what you eat that can, can, can also exacerbate it. The only thing I would say if, if you are having those symptoms, uh, H. pylori is a bacteria that can cause it. And, of course, there is uh, medical treatment that you would have to do for that. But if it's not H. pylori, if it's just an acid uh, reflux, I would really take it down to the diet and lifestyle modifications. Yeah, and, and trying to eat as many non-acidic foods as you can, and that includes citrus and things. But So if, if it's blocking, if these PPIs and, and acid blockers are, are inhibiting our uh, the ability of the body to absorb B12, um, what does that result in? Lower energy? Yes, absolutely. So you think about B12, B12 is your, um, it's, there's so many things on a biochem biochemical level of how they work on your cells and the mitochondria and, and ATP or energy production, but absolutely you would just feel generally fatigued. And actually, I will say, I had my vitamin B12 level checked, and I was a little low. And so sometimes you don't feel it. But I would say that one, along with, I'm also a big advocate of vitamin D, because yeah. most of us are deficient in vitamin D. Um, I would say have your vitamin B12 levels checked. But absolutely, that's, that's notorious for the PPIs and the reason why 
you know, I, I'm hoping that they'll be prescribed less and less, and I hope we can get people off of those um, because it's almost, you know, it, it, it happens. So I think, again, if you just focus on, you know, dietary modifications, uh, doing that, hopefully we can, um, you know, nip that in the bud without medication. I just have one more question, Sandra, then I'm going to hand it over to you. Um, I've read, and I'm actually taking it myself, uh, that I, I'm having some aloe juice every day because I heard that was a good neutralizer. Yeah, so I don't know much about um, aloe vera other, other than I, I have heard it being used. I've, I've worked with uh, people who who use it. Um, the key is what it's doing, and this goes back to, you know, think about Ayurvedic medicine and, and, and really where where we should all think, too, when we think about chronic ailments is the, the gut lining. So our, you know, um, intestinal tract, if you think about what we eat and what we ingest, is the first point of contact that um, basically our, our immune system has to, you know, either fight it off or is also absorb any nutrients. But it's the gut lining that if the gut lining is impaired, and you've probably heard the term leaky gut syndrome and things like that, uh, that can cause a chain reaction um, on our immune system. So aloe vera and other things like glutamine that are actually an animal product, um, you hear about, you know, making chicken soup and really, you know, um, like our ancestors used to do has a high glutamine content. And the whole purpose of that is to heal the gut. So if you, you know, um, keep your gut lining healthy and permeable, it's a easier to, um, fight off infection and prevent chronic infection or chronic diseases. And it's also, you allow your body to absorb nutrients better. Sarah, you know, I got to tell you, we've had a lot of nutrition people on uh, our show over the years, and you are by far one of the best. I think your pharmaceutical background combined with your RN, you know, gives you a unique perspective on healthy living that a lot of people just can't compete with. So I'm just going to give you, you know, a big thumbs up uh, from us over here for providing so much information in such a short period of time. We're going to have you back later on in the year, but for right now, I'm going to tell people they can reach you at health. Healthy Biz Travel. That's healthybiztravel.com. Our guest today was Sarah James. For those of you who had missed the first half of the show, uh, please check us out on iTunes at Powered Up Talk Radio. You can also reach us at our website, poweredup.talkradio.com, as well as Toginet Radio. More after the break. We've got lots more powered up with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin after these messages. Listen, something is brewing. The beautiful business evolution is coming. The way we do business is about to change for the better forever. This is real business at its very best. On Beautiful Business Radio, you will learn what it means to truly prosper, how to nourish yourself and your business, how to earn what you deserve and make a difference in the world. The tide is rising. The change is here. Discover a new way to live, love, and partner with yourself and your business on Philippa Rollins Presents Beautiful Business Radio where you matter and your business thrives every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, only here on the WooHoo Radio Network. Hey, kids, do you think you're creative? Do you want to be don't have enough time for your arts, crafts, and hobbies? Or do you just need a kick in the pants? Hi, I'm Mark Lipinski, the host of Creative Mojo with Mark Lipinski, right here on TogiNet Radio. Come on and join me every Wednesday afternoon for some creative inspiration and two of the fastest, fun-filled hours of your week. Hey, need ideas? How about a little motivation and a lot of inspiration? Join the fun on Creative Mojo with me, Mark Lipinski. I'm here live every Wednesday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 Pacific, right here on toginet.com. Now what are you waiting for? Goals, objectives.
objectives, business and action plans. How important are they for me to manage? Whether you're an executive, entrepreneur, or maybe you're just someone looking to advance your career and want to be confidently prepared for your future, business and life coach Carmen Carosa can help you remove obstacles and move forward in the right direction. Carmen is known as the real world coach for a reason. His no-nonsense style along with an innate ability to form connections with people gives you a unique opportunity to see higher and further than ever before. We live and work in an ever-changing, complicated world that can leave us with questions about every decision we make. Join host Carmen Carosa, business and life coach, on Forward Motion. Every Monday at 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern, you will realize dreams and aspirations you thought. Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin. Here's more Powered Up with Beck and Franklin. This is for all you girls about 42. Hey, ladies, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm with Linda Franklin. And I love that Baby Love song. You know, I know that was a little blip in the, the system, but I was like, ooh, Baby Love, my Baby Love. Oh, we'll keep it, Sabrina. Sabrina's our, our um, producer in Texas, and she's so great about going like, oh, my God, I should have done that. But I think it's great because it's live radio, and that's what we do. Um, so thank you, Sabrina, for brightening up our day with a little Baby Love intro, uh, interlude. Uh, we are going to switch. Uh, we're going to switch uh, gears a little bit, Linda, but not too much because we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about staying centered on the road uh, with our tarot card expert Robbie McPherson and and Robbie in addition to um, being a tarot card reader also has a very very um, heavily traveled past as a news reporter so she knows all about what it's like to travel for business and she's reported in Montana she's she's just been all over the place and she's in Buffalo New York now so I I'm interested to see what she has to say from a tarot card perspective about staying balanced on the road. Well, hello, Linda and Sandy. It's so good to be back here. Thank you for having me. Oh, um, you're welcome, Robbie Ann. So I, uh, I, I've, I've always been one of those people who enjoys seeing new places and discovering new things, and I'm always fascinated by different cultures, you know, one of those Viva La Difference people. Um, but I actually hate traveling. Like, I, I hate the idea of moving um, from one place to another. You know, the the uh, air travel and, you know, it just, there's so many things about it nowadays that drive me crazy and pretty much drive everyone crazy. So, um I've kind of discovered that it's important to have these little um, kind of tricks and talismans and things like that to sort of keep your spirit centered while your body is hurling through space at, you know, 50,000 miles an hour or, you know, on, a, on a jet plane or, or uh, you know, in a car where you're, you're breathing um, – polluted air basically in some tiny little car on a, on a highway. Um, well, well, tell us what, what, what are those tricks um, that you've discovered? Because um, it, it, it's, I mean, it's, it's just life now. I, I just know, and everybody's feeling it. Things are moving so fast, whether we're traveling or not, uh, that it's, it's just hard to keep up. And, you know, there's definitely a shift in energy. So what can we do to, to slow that down for ourselves. We're not going to slow down the world, but we right. can slow down ourselves. Right, absolutely. You're so right, Linda. Because it, it, it isn't just, oh, I'm going on vacation. How can I stay centered? It's, oh, my gosh, life now is 100 miles an hour. Um, I think one of, the, one of the greatest tricks out there, I think, uh, has to do with smells. Um, the sense of smell is a really powerful sense and it can agitate you it can 
calm you, it can energize you, it can relax you, and <clears throat> it's a very individual thing. You know, there are many people who are sensitive to smells. I'm one of them, but I happen to love the ones that don't bother me. So uh, bringing along, um, let's say you're, you're traveling by air, bringing along um, a scarf that has your favorite scent, maybe it's lotion or perfume or something, um, even uh, some people like uh, scented oils, you know, a more natural scent like that, um, something like that. Uh, when you're when you're standing in line and the people around you are really beginning to annoy you, <laughs> you know, or something annoying is happening, they announce yet another delay. Um, oops, we lost your luggage. You know, you just kind of draw that scarf up to your nose and, you know, just take a deep breath. The act of breathing helps. And then you you just inhale that smell. And it's just a, a touchstone in a way. You know, it just kind of brings you back like, OK, all right. You know what? It's no big deal. It's just time. It's just a little extra time that I have to stand here or extra time that I have to sit or, uh, you know, a little diversion. You know, it's nothing, nothing huge and, and uh, irreversible. And um, when you get to a hotel room, um, some people I like to do this. I, I throw a little uh, candle you know, I don't have it in a glass thing, just a plain regular wax candle um, of a scent that I like. And I, I just throw a little one in my bag, in a Ziploc baggie. And um, when I get to the room, I don't even have to light it because that can be dangerous. And sometimes hotels um, won't allow that. But the, just the scent in the room, uh, you know, you can just set it out and, and it just it brings something of the the atmosphere of your house or something peaceful into your home. You can also do that with uh, room scents or linen sprays, you know, things like that. And sometimes we don't think about just bringing those creature comforts. You know, it doesn't take any room in your suitcase for a little spray bottle. And you walk into the hotel room, spray the linen spray, and poof, you know, there you are. So uh, that, I think that's the biggest and easiest comfort is uh, just to be in control of what you smell. And also... If you are traveling um, next to a person who's got a particular odor that is unpleasant to you, um, you can always kind of bury yourself in your scarf. That uh, that has come in handy for me now and then. <laughs> oh, I bet. I was on a flight once, um, and uh, the lady was coming from Moscow, and I was coming from the from uh, Germany to for Berlin to Los Angeles, and I had like 14 hours or 16 hours sitting next to this woman who just smelled so bad. The flight attendant actually came and gave me a drink because she smelled so bad, um, <laughs> and that's a true story. Uh, but when, Robbie, when we go on uh, like, you know, travel things like that. A lot of times we have time to ourselves. Like, you know, I know it sounds weird, but it's like when I travel for work, I actually, it's actually easier than being a single mom. And I can have, you know, a couple hours at night in the hotel room. You know, I was thinking about getting my own deck of tarot cards and learning how to read them for myself. What would be your recommendation for that? Because I think it's something fun you can play with on the airplane or you can, you know, you don't want to bring them into Muslim countries, but, you know, <laughs> they're, they're kind of neat and they can be used as a meditative guide. So can you talk to me a little bit about that? Absolutely. Uh, the the best thing, if you are a new tarot, if you're new to the tarot, the best thing that you can do is pick out one card at a time and study it, um, look at the picture, make a note, a mental note of um, what uh, what you see and feel from the picture. Um, there are tons of wonderful reference books out there. You know, any bookstore is just chock-a-block full of all kinds of, uh, of great reference books. And um, you, you can actually uh, learn a lot about a card just from kind of staring at it and thinking about it. And sometimes what I like to do is before I go on a trip, I will ask the deck um, to just give me one card that kind of sums up the trip. And then I'll use that card as a meditation. 
but it is very important when you travel with tarot cards, and I don't always travel with them. In fact, I rarely do. Um, when you do travel with them, um, you you should definitely not just shove them in a bag. You you have to wrap them well and keep them with you. You know, hold them in your purse, um, keep them in a in a nice container that's dry and safe. And you know, you sort of have to you have to treat them with respect. What do you think about the tarot apps? I have a tarot card app on my phone. I totally dig it. It's so much fun. Um, and I find it to be freakishly accurate. The set that I bought um, is made by John Holland uh, from Hay House, Ocean House mm -hmm. Media, from Louise Hay. So I have a lot of fun with that. What's your take on electronic tarot? And we only have a couple minutes before the end uh, of the show. You know, it's all what you make it. Um, if, if it works for you and it speaks to you, then, you know, bravo. Um, if it, uh, if, if it's for some people, it's just a source of fun and, and kind of a, a kick, you know, for, for an app or something like that, that's fine too. Um, I, I think, uh, when you have the physical deck, it's kind of a different story, you know, to me, it's almost, um, it's almost like a Bible where it's something that's a, a spiritual piece uh, uh, and, and, and so I treat it that way. But, you know, an electronic app or something like that on your phone, um, I think you can, if you get something out of it, then, hey, why not? You know, while you're sitting there waiting for takeoff and as long as you can have your electronics on, you know, do a bunch of readings <laughs> if, if it works well, for yeah, you. Because, you know, it, it, I like to do what you say. I bring up the one card and it'll say, you know, you know, things are changing in your life. So stay strong. You know, give me some, you know, cool thing like that. And then I can can actually it kind of guides my meditation. So I yeah. think about like, huh, I wonder what is changing in my life. Oh, and, you know, the ni nice thing about these ones is the cards are always positive. I don't know why that happens, but, they, you know, even the, the cards that aren't really positive come up with some positive way of looking at it. So. So, I don't know. I think they're kind of neat. I, I'm so glad that you had time to visit with us today. I know it was short. We'll bring you back again in the future. Um, my name is Sandra Beck, and this is Powered Up Talk Radio, and my co-host and partner in crime and the clear hands-down winner in the Healthy Word Association contest <laughs> is Linda Franklin. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. <laughs> you know, I think you were like four for five and getting the exact number out of ten. So I think well, you're psyched. I don't feel like the stuff. nutrition expert today. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh. Well, I thought you did great. And as always, it's been a lot of fun uh, being on the show today. You can find uh, Sarah James at Sarah at Healthy Biz Travel. And Robbie, where do people find you? At whichwaytarot.com. That's W-H-I-C-H, -H, as in which way do I go? Whichwaytarot.com. Awesome. We'll see you guys next week. We're so glad you joined us for Powered Up with Beck and Franklin. Sandra Beck, Los Angeles-based single mother and technology company owner, knows what it's like to be fit, funny, and fantastic in your 40s. Linda Franklin, a New Yorker with a successful marriage and prominent career, is the brains behind The Real Cougar Woman. She shares her wisdom, grace, and laugh-out-loud opinions based on her stellar successes, both in the financial world and in in her personal life. Check out our website, poweredupwithbeckandfranklin.com, and join us next week for another great conversation. We're here every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, right here on toganet.com. <laughs>